going up here over South Station. We'll show you the view from Sky 5 uh, a little while ago, and that vantage point looking right through that cracked glass into this building that is under construction. From radio traffic, we understand that this I-beam fell off the 32nd floor of this building tumbling down, crashing through that glass, and then landing uh, where you saw it here closer to the ground. It didn't make it all the way to the ground. Of course, this has been a pretty tricky project, building this large tower right over South Station. Trains continue to run at this hour, but we do have construction crews blocking the entrance here. As far as we understand, uh, there were no injuries when this I-beam came down, but we'll show you another live look from the ground as they continue, it appears, they continue to cut this I-beam, that large orange I-beam that, according to radio traffic, came tumbling down. Uh, the circumstances of exactly how this happened, uh, still unclear. We're still waiting to hear back from the fire department and officials here on the scene. But firefighters are here, and as we uh, go closer to the ground, you can see some of the construction crews here uh, blocking this entrance so people do not go through, through here while they remove this large, heavy beam. We're live at South Station, John Atwater, WCVB News Center 5. Wow, a lot of pedestrians there this time of the day. John, thank you for that. All right, I want you to watch this. It's tough to see, but it's a story you're going to see only on 5. This is new video. We're not going to show you the moment he died, but this is the video of the man who was dragged to death at Broadway Station on the red line. We are going to freeze the video. Uh, anytime you see this on our air, we will freeze the video before it actually happens where he is crushed between the train and the platform. It happened back in 2022, but this new video offers a harrowing new perspective of the final moments of that man's life. And in addition to that video, the attorney for the victim's family says that he needs more information from the MBTA about what went wrong our Emily Maha is live right now at the Broadway station where all of this tragedy happened, Emily. Well, Ben Maria, for two years, the son of Robinson Leyland has been waiting for answers. Today, his attorney telling me he is frustrated, saying the MBTA is not handing over critical legal documents. And again, we want to warn you, the video of the night Leyland died is very difficult to watch. You can see the 39-year-old father running on the platform, his arm stuck in the door of a red line train at the Broadway station. We have stopped that video before impact. A young woman trying to to help him clearly distraught as Leyland is dragged to his death. A federal investigation by the NTSB found an electrical short circuit in the train's door, a camera blind spot, and a driver's failure to follow department procedure all contributed to Leyland's death. Now, the lawyer representing Leyland's adult son, who's filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the T, says the MBTA has failed to provide critical legal documents about the investigation that could help provide the family closure. Can you imagine laying in the dock on the train tracks, breathing your last breath, and you see this little girl like yelling to you, talking to you, trying to help you, trying to give you some comfort. I, I, we, we need to know that. Christopher needs to know that. The MBTA says the Red Line fleet was tested following Leyland's death, saying no other cars were found to have the same short circuiting defects. Now, I have reached out to the MBTA by email today, but have not heard back from them at this point. Coming up at five, we'll hear more from the attorney representing the family about the steps he's taken to try to get those documents from the T and what else he wants to see from the MBTA. Reporting live, Emily Maha, WCVB News Center 5. It is tough to watch. Emily, thank you for that. Now to another story you're going to see only on five here. Young children had to be rescued from their school bus after it went off the road and nearly tipped over. This happened in Worcester County in Hubbardston near the line with Templeton. That's where our David Beanick is live with how people help to rescue those kids. David. Yeah, that's right, Ben. I just spoke with the police chief here in Hubbardston. He tells me that there were nearly 30 kids on that bus this afternoon, along with the driver and monitor. Now, they were headed home for the day, and the police chief says some of the students on the bus started misbehaving. So the bus driver pulled over to the side of the road, but the side of the road was muddy and soft. So the bus started tipping to one side at one point at a 45 degree angle. Now, a father and son from Paxton, they were following behind the bus. They saw what happened. They jumped out of their vehicle to rescue the students through the bus's back emergency door. Seeing that the bus was very kind of tippy, I ran back over and we ripped open the back door and the kids were just piling on each other trying to get out. And so we, we took everybody out. Stay away from 
from the bus. Stay away from the bus. Nobody was hurt. Some of the kids were loaded onto another bus to continue the ride home. Others were picked up at the scene by their parents. The bus was towed away, towed out of the mud. It is not damaged, we're told. And it's probably safe to say that the kids on that bus will behave much better during tomorrow's ride. Live in Hubbardson, David Beanick, WCVB News Center 5.